Welcome to the Australian Finance Podcast, a podcast for people who want to learn more about their personal finances and get the most from their money. This series is hosted by Kate Campbell from How To Money and Owen Raskovich from Rask Finance. The Australian Finance Podcast is provided for educational purposes only. The information is general in nature and does not take into account your needs, goals or objectives. What that means is the information does not apply to you specifically. So consider getting the advice of a licensed and trusted professional before acting on the information. Welcome to the Australian Finance Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about insurance. Now, yes, that should... fun topic everyone loves to talk about. That's it. We should put a big drum roll in there. We're talking about all different types of insurance and we're hopefully going to do it quickly enough that you don't fall asleep and make it a little bit enjoyable so you uh, so you get something from it. And there'll be actionable takeaways and show notes and a checklist. Yes. Which I haven't created yet, but by the time we send this live, I will have created that. <laughs> That's so good. So don't worry, it'll be there. And you'll be able to use that and um, get pushed in the right direction, I guess. So what are we going to talk about? What's, 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 what's first? Oh, well, I guess preparing this episode, I didn't realize how many types of insurances there are. So I think the first one we wanted to discuss was insurance inside and outside of super. Yeah. Okay. So before we go on, we've said, uh, we give our disclaimer in the intro, but I just want to say that insurance is one of those things where it can be deeply personal. We will probably have thousands of people listen to this podcast episode I don't know all of your situations, so if I say something, it's very general. It's more so just information, so consider how it applies to you. And what I mean is don't go and change super funds or don't go and change your insurance just because I've said something. Really think about your pre-existing conditions and all that sort of stuff. Having said that, let's talk about the differences between insurance inside and outside super. Okay, so when you have an insurance what you're doing is you're buying protection for yourself. And that could be protection against anything, right? You could, you could, you'd, I reckon nowadays you could get insurance on almost anything. And there are some companies that do that. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to pay a very small amount to protect you from a very big mm. hit to your finances. And the easiest way to do that is to pay a premium. And that's the thing that you pay out of your pocket every month and it might be or every year. And The difference between doing that in in super and doing it outside of super, so when you just pay for it, what I mean by outside of super is I'm just paying for it from my bank account versus inside super is that I don't have to pay it from my bank account. So my my super company, I tell them how much insurance I want and then they hold the insurance. Mm. There are some differences there and you should probably make yourself familiar with it. But when everyone signs up to a super fund and they put money in, Typically, they get three different types of default cover, which is just the the amount that they think is appropriate for whatever person is in that fund. So it might be by age, it could be by income, it could be by many different things. So there's three, life, income, and TVD. Now, I said this is going to be quick, so I'm going to try and speed this up a bit, <laughs> but they're really important. So I hold all three of these types of insurance through my super fund. So If that gives you any indication of where I see the value in it, I don't want to pay for these things out of my own pocket. I'd rather my superannuation fund does that. However, someone's got to pay for it. So the way I do it is I hold these three types of insurance inside super and then I put a little bit extra in. I just be pay money in every month and I put that money in automatically. Now, let's break it down. Life insurance. Life insurance, if you cark it, the payment is going to go to your family. Yeah. But because I hold it inside super, the insurance uh, company deals with the super fund and then the super fund distributes it to whoever gets it, right? So when you think about life insurance, if you're the sole breadwinner, you have a lot of responsibility in terms of financial responsibility. So you will have children's school fees going into the future. You'll have a mortgage. You'll have cars. Think about everything that your partner is going to miss out on because you're not earning money for them. That's what you need cover for, right? So that's when you think about it. So there's calculators you can use. For example, just, just examples, there's one on the Host Plus website. I think there's one on Australian Super. Mm-hmm. You could just Google insurance calculator. It'll come up. You could ask an expert if you really want to get tailored advice, which is probably not such a bad thing. Or you could just do an average of your income. So some finance books suggest X percent, you know, like 10 times your annual income. That's what you should have if you have this type of situation. Very general advice, but you can get them online. 
Um, I'll provide a link to a report that says what the average person should have. Mm. Next, income protection. This is probably the most important one for a single income family is just securing your income. And the way it works is I, uh, you know, I'm a tradie. I get in a car accident. My income is gone. Mm. Three months, I can't, I can't work for three months because I've broken my ankle. Well, let's say even six months, right? We've talked about emergency fund yeah. savings and that. I've injured my ankle, so I need to get some sort of cover. Now, the way it works with income protection is you go to the doctor and you get a medical certificate and then you send that off to the super fund, right? Or well, they'll get you to send it straight to the insurer. And what happens is from the day that you get the certificate, that's when the waiting period starts. So then you might get one, two, three months of a waiting period, just for example, and then you start to earn money. Yeah. As in that's when the insurance kicks in. So income protection is you are trying to protect yourself from a really long injury. And this you can get income protection for two years, you can get it for five years, you can get it until you're 65. So if this person loses their leg, yeah. and they can't work for five years, then they might get income protection for five years. I've seen, not losing legs, but I've seen things <laughs> like that happen before. So that's a really good one, income protection. You can just do a percentage of your wage or you can do an agreed amount. The last one is TPD. And this is if you fall off a balcony and you seriously, seriously, seriously hurt yourself. Mm. This is extremely important for the sole breadwinner, in my opinion, because if you are totally and permanently incapacitated, which is the, def the, the definition, you need to have some sort of protection. Like think about it. I don't know if you've been to the hospital recently, but if you go into a hospital for any type of surgery, there's things that you'll pay for. Like we have a great system in Australia, but there's things that you'll pay for that need to be covered and it mm -hmm. gets expensive quick. TPD, that's the insurance that covers that type of thing. Yeah. So bringing all this together, you can get these three inside super. I do them. I would encourage people to at least look into it and consider the options, you know, if you're the type of person that like paying a hundred bucks a week for some type of fancy insurance is well outside of your budget, call your super fund because they may be able to arrange that and you, they'll put you onto an expert too. So that's those three done. And the reason why I've labored on those three is because they're the three most important in yeah. my view. They are like the worst case scenario. Yeah. And they're the most likely to affect your quality of life if something does happen that that's right seen. and the reason why you can get those three in, inside super and not anywhere else is because i think the government has realized that those are the three most important things yeah they the government deep down the government actually wants you to earn money and go back to work or for your family to be provided for because they want them to work and yeah. make money so they can collect taxes so these are the three important things to really really understand if you need any more information we'll have links in the show notes and most super funds do offer this don't they yeah most super funds offer a default level of cover like yeah. i said but just check it because it's often very, very, very low. Or if you're really young and you might not need insurance, it's often too high. Yeah. So just, you know, we've, we've got some information on this on the, the RAS Finance website. It's shameless self-promotion, but you can, <laughs> yeah, you can find plenty of information on this elsewhere plus calculators. It takes five minutes. Just give it a shot. Log into your super account and just work it out. The next one. Funeral insurance, Owen. <laughs> yes. and I saw you included that one. <laughs> yeah, so this is just a quick one. Funeral insurance, obviously it pays for funeral expenses. In my opinion, this can, I've, I've never looked into it um, getting it myself because I'm still quite young. Obviously, this is like a, <laughs> yeah. a, a probably later in life thing. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of it because if you have, like we've been talking about throughout this entire series is an emergency fund. Insur funerals can be expensive, mm. but if you have that emergency fund, you may be able to cover that expense. Right? Yeah. You might not get you know, a, a horse and cart carrying the, the coffin down the road, <laughs> but you might get you know, what you need. Yeah. And it's probably going to take away the headache and you don't have to pay the premiums. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one. Health insurance. Do you have health insurance? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. Um, I won't ask you who on air, but who you go with, but that's all right. We'll talk about that later. Um, health insurance. So... Most people are familiar with health insurance and it generally pops up around April every year. You always see these really expensive ads put on the TV. Some of them look like little rats or ferrets that pop up on the TV <laughs> and then there's one that looks like a creepy dude yep. that's talking about insurance. <laughs> okay, health insurance, it's important to know the two different things that go into it. Mm. There's extras and then there's what we call hospital cover. Most people don't know that they're two separate things and you don't have to have, you can have one and not the other. And you can have one from, you could have one of each from a different uh, health insurer. Yeah. So 
Hospital obviously covers you for when you go to hospital and you have an emergency. Yes, the ambulance. That's right. Well, this is the thing, right? Most of them, if you're listening to this and you're in New South Wales, you will have a different type of ambulance cover to what you have here in Victoria or if you're in WA. Oh, wow. So some, this is where it's like... Yeah, it makes it confusing. Oh, and the rules, the changes. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so I'm going to be real quick with this and we might do a full episode of this later on yeah. down the track, but... Hospital covers you for emergencies, most of them, right? There are minimum standards that they have to adhere to, but there are a hell of a lot of asterisks when it comes to the <laughs> levels of cover. So you can get like low, medium, high type of cover, right? Yeah. Like, and sometimes if you're the type of person that has health insurance, it pays to go for the more expensive option. And I mean that, like it it pays to go with the more expensive option. Yeah. <laughs> There's an emphasis there in my voice. <laughs> some of these big names are also some of the worst right so you'll have limits within limits within limits with some of them so you know you might be just get, you might have fine print of fine print of, of fine print yeah so my advice is to really look around shop around and actually just take a moment to read mm. what you're covered for and call them even i'm like I'm, i consider myself pretty fine like i'm pretty literate when it comes to stuff but just call them and ask them if i get cancer will this cover me mm ask them or um you know if i if it's not an emergency and i have something wrong with my knee will i get cover what's the pre-existing conditions rule so generally when you switch health insurers whatever level of cover you're on can be carried over instantly to the other health insurer but if you need to if you change the policy in any way you might find that you have to serve waiting periods and waiting periods are effectively times that you have to serve before you can um you can claim on it now, extras cover is the cover that you get for things that are like out of hospital. Mm. So There's, your dentist, your optometrist. That's right. And once again, you don't have to have the same hospital and extras you know, policy. You can have them split up. You could go with the best hospital cover and then get a lower level of extras. It's just that the health insurers like you to get it together because it, they can make more money from you. Yeah, of course. And one of the things that you'll notice is that Often the names that you least expect have the best type of extras cover. So Choice, the website Choice, characterizes extras cover as budget management. So a lot of people have done studies to find that if you just put money aside, you're probably better off than actually taking the extras cover. Yeah. So my rule of thumb is that if I was to pay, you know, if I was planning to pay more than $2,000 a year on um, extras like dental or whatever I would probably consider getting health insurance so that's yeah. just my line in the sand it's not like definitive because obviously you could be someone that needs some sort of weird tooth <laughs> procedure that costs you a lot of money yeah uh, so but you then you got to be careful because a lot of the extras will only cover up to a certain amount right. on each dental wall they won't cover certain dental treatments well, so this is how crazy it is right this is how crazy the health insurance system is Health insurers have relationships with different hospitals and dentists. Mm. So you don't know who those are. <laughs> so you don't know like what the, the deal is. Yeah. What are you getting? But one rule of thumb that I use, another one, is that the best health insurers for extras typically cover 50% of it, the whatever it is. So it okay. might be like a, if you pay $1,000 for dental, they'll cover 50% mm -hmm. because they don't cover the whole thing. Right? You're still out of pocket. Yeah. Um, okay, so all this. Do I need health insurance? Well, maybe, right? That's this com completely personal decision. But there isn't a tax incentive. And this is where a very big misconception is. On the TV, they'll be like, do you earn more than X? Well, you should get health insurance before June 30 or wh whatever it is, mm. right? This is the thing. No. <laughs> That's not how it always works. So if you earn more than 90K for a single or 180K for a household or couple, you start to pay an extra tax called the Medicare levy surcharge. Right. The surcharge is different to the normal levy. Yeah. It's an extra one, right? So if you pay more than that, if, if you earn more than that, sorry, you'll be paying this extra tax. But if you have health insurance, you won't be paying that. Mm. So it is possible if you're a, what do you call it? You know, you're, you've got some pretty good, pretty deep pockets. <laughs> if you earn a 90K single, that's pretty good. Well done. But you... You could actually save on tax if you yeah. the more you earn. So that's a really good incentive to take out private health cover. But that 
another important note, that's not extras. It's just the hospital cover. Yep. It has okay. nothing to do with extras. Okay. So the question that I always get, and this is a really personal one, is I'm under 30 and I heard there's a rule coming in or there's a rule that if I turn 30 and I don't have health insurance, I need to get it. And that's a really common question because the way it's marketed makes people think that they have to get it. And if they don't get it by 30, there's going to be some great penalty. They're going to be locked up and thrown away for <laughs> like forever. Yeah. No. So the way it works is that if you are over 30 and you take out health insurance, it's going to cost you more than if you were under 30 and took it out. And the reason why is the government wants you to take it out as early as possible so you don't cost them as much money. Yep. <laughs> okay. It costs you, last time I checked, 2% extra every year. As in, for every year that you go past 30 without getting health insurance, it's going to cost you 2% more than if you got it before you were 30. But I just said the rules about earning money. Okay, so the way I think about it is if you're 28, 29, somewhere in that bracket, and you know you're going to earn over 90000 in the next few years, and you're going to keep working, mm. you might as well just get health insurance. Yeah. Finally, the last thing before I move on from this is pregnant people or people that expect to be pregnant. There are some really long waiting periods. Yeah. So... This is like, I'm not a woman and I'm not having a kid. <laughs> so you can take this however you like. You can be like, Dad, what does he know? But most people or many people, I should say not most, but many people have private health insurance but still go through a public system. Now, why would they do that? It's because oftentimes the cover or the, the resources of hospitals are better in public hospitals than they are in private. So what happens is, you know, oftentimes women will be transferred to a public hospital or they just won't have time to get to their private hospital, so they'll just go there. There are benefits. Um, so you could, say, pick your own obstetrician and that person could stick with you throughout the pregnancy, right? If, you, if you're not that way inclined, you could get by with the public mm -hmm. system. There were, I could put this in the show notes and I'm just going to spin it off the top of my head, but it's going to cost, on average, between five and 10000 to have a child in a private hospital, regardless of whether you've got insurance yeah. anyway. But that's an intensely personal decision and I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. But that's just something to consider. And most of the health insurers will want you to have insurance 12 months before you are even, you're due to be you know, giving birth. Yeah. So think long in advance, right? And plan ahead for that. Oh, okay. Health <laughs> I'm insurance. glad we've got you to cover yes. that for us, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one. So car insurance. Yes. Okay, we're... I'm trying Complete to do this in like below 25 topic. minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you everything about insurance that you need to know. But obviously, you follow us up with questions. Car insurance. And I've got in brackets in our show notes, financial disaster. That's my belief that it's very expensive to have a car. Anyway, so obviously, car insurance is a must-have. In fact, in most states, or I think all states, it's a legal requirement to have the basic level of insurance cover on a car. That's because if you just smash into a, a pole or you, you know, heaven forbid, you hit a pedestrian you've got to have some sort of cover. You know, you've got to pay yeah. your share for that. So there are a few different types of CTP, third party, full comp, full comprehensive. Yeah. That's my slang. That's my insurance <laughs> slang. So third party is kind of like the minimum that most people get and it just protects the third party. So not you, yeah. it protects everyone else. And there's generally limits on that. There is some sort of like in between where it's like you can get third party to protect the other person, but you can also get a limit. So you might get two grand as well. Uh, obviously, if it's not your fault and someone crashed into you, then you should get your insurance provider to go at their insurance provider because you're not going to pay. Yeah. But you might have to still have an excess. But okay, so then the full comprehensive insurance is like it pays for everything. It replaces your car either to an agreed value or a market value. And yeah. you should read the fine print to know what the <laughs> difference is. Because if your car is obviously getting cheaper over time because it's getting older, you probably shouldn't be paying the same level. You know, you shouldn't be paying the same amount because your yeah. car's worth less so yeah so there's a website called choice which we've we'll draw a link to in the show notes choice has a lot of great information on different types of insurance and what to look for it's also cheaper to shop around i found every year mm. talk about loyalty car insurers <laughs> are the opposite of that yeah. so if you look online for a new policy every year chances are you might get it two or three hundred dollars cheaper mm. so just look at that uh, and for new people to new uh, insurers it's typically cheaper too so yeah. just keep looking around and don't forget to set a reminder in your phone that's what i do set a reminder in my phone say car insurance expiring this month like this is my google calendar yeah and then i will call them and say this is what this is what the deal is i'm going to move unless you give me x yeah. and they'll, they'll generally do it one huge thing here is i'm going to say never get car insurance never get any type of insurance for a car dealer <laughs> 
Yeah. Right? That should be like a no-brainer. Mm. But people think like they, it's either like they're in the moment, pressure, yeah. whatever. Car insurance or any type of insurance through a car dealer. There's been a few ASIC reports that have come out. I'm not, I, I can't cite them verbatim, like off the top of my head, but <laughs> you can you can Google them if you want and you can find out the types of crap that these guys and girls are peddling to people that think that they have to have that insurance. Yeah. You don't have to. Go somewhere else, get it from a proper reputable insurer. For what it's worth, you can also Google car insurance complaint statistics and it, you'll get an official thing that shows the worst insurers for complaints. Where there's smoke, I found there's fire. <laughs> okay, next one. Home and contents insurance. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna take a breath soon. Okay. okay. Home and contents insurances. The differences. Should I have it? Well, the difference between home and contents is homes. Uh, home insurance protects the house. Yeah. The structure, if you like, and the contents is pretty much if you turn the house upside down, what falls out. That's a very <laughs> loose yeah. definition of what the two are. If you live in an apartment, you should check to see if you need home insurance or. You know, there's there's a chance that there might be body corp insurance that covers the house or the premises, mm. but you still need yep. contents if you want that. So if you want to protect all your belongings, the home is the greatest asset. So take the time to do this or at least consider it. Like, well, do what you want, but just consider it because if someone was to burglarize your house or, you you know, there was a fire, could you recover? I mean, for 99% of Australians. Yeah. Yeah. Your house is just yeah, a huge amount. You're of up money. the creek without a paddle. So definitely consider this it costs a, it can cost a bit if you have say contents insurance it might cost you a few hundred dollars a year but i'll get to that in just a minute if you have home insurance it might cost you one two thousand maybe a little bit more depending on where you live if you live in far north queensland shout out to port douglas great part of the world if you live up there you're going to be smashed with home insurance some insurers will probably won't even touch you yeah because you know you can almost guarantee you're going to be hit by a cyclone every year and it's going to be very hard. Also, if you're in a bushfire zone, again, it's going to be more expensive. Mm-hmm. But it's a case-by-case basis. So just check it out. Shop around. Things that you can do to, to lower that expense is things like um, have deadlocks for you know for theft. Yep. But also talk about how you've made your house fireproof or whatever. Just there are really little subtle things that can go a long way to getting down that, that cost of the insurance. Okay. You can, with a house, you can have a replacement or you can have market value, same as like a car. Look into that. If you have contents insurance and you you pimp your house out as an Airbnb or or on stays, be careful because that can affect your contents insurance. For example, you get someone to come in Airbnb and they just take all the TVs in the house and then you're left with nothing. Yeah. Some insurers won't cover that. Okay. Then there's also things like a home office. Be careful. Most, many cover, but some don't. So I work from home, I have content insurance. I made sure that that was in the policy that I looked at. Yep. Um, whew, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget about things like jewelry and engagement rings are a big one, right? People think, oh, just, you know, my contents, it, my jewelry is in my house, therefore it's covered. No, most of the time it's not. If it's over a pre-specified limit, like two grand, five grand, yeah. etc., it probably won't be covered. Also... One big one because I'm married, I've got rings. If you're outside of the house, you might not be covered. So you can get cover the contents for the house that also extends to specific items outside the house. Okay. But I found that it was more costly to do it that way than to just go direct to an uh, engagement ring insurer. Yeah. But each their own, look around. That's home and contents insurance. <laughs> We've only got a few left and they're yeah. going to be simple. So pet insurance. I'm the father at the time of writing this. I'm the father of two rabbits, right? Um, that's a bit weird. Not many people have rabbits. Okay, get that. There's a lot of dog and cat people listening. Good for you. I like them too, but I've got rabbits. Anyway, the thing that I'll give you guys that I don't have is that dog and cat owners can get insurance. People that own rabbits, as far as I can <laughs> tell, couldn't, which would have been very nice because they're very fickle animals and they cost a bucket load. So, what do I mean about dog and, and cat insurance? It's not like if they pass away, you get a check in the mail. <laughs> this is for like if they have an injury. If they have, yes, you know, the vet insurance. bills. That's right, the vet mm. bills. But be very, 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 very careful with this stuff because there's, there's limits to it. And they typically, like all insurers, they only want to insure the pets that are healthy, yeah. the pets that do nothing, and the pets that you know don't 
aren't really like boisterous and just bouncing off things. And, yeah. Right. So they know they're smart. These insurers, right? They know if you own a dog that sleeps all day, it's probably going to be cheaper than one that's like crazy. Right. <laughs> so they're generally the insurance typically lasts between age groups. So you can't insure a really old dog or you can't insure a really young dog. So you can see already that they're trying to narrow that yeah. bracket. But also, uh, th- this type of insurance can be quite costly. But dogs and cats can be costly themselves. So, and let's be honest, like they're part of the family. So yeah. if you do do it, look around, go to a reputable insurer. Don't be pressurized by sales tactics like over the phone or just randomly, mm. you know, cold calling, like all things, and read the T's and C's. But those are pretty much the two only animals that I've found that you can insure unless you're like a zoo or something. Uh, I don't have the insurance because I can't get it, but I probably wouldn't get it. That's just my opinion because I'd probably have that emergency fund decide yeah. to, to pay for that sort of stuff. Um, final one. Travel insurance. This is something we've talked about because yeah. you might be going overseas. My This is an advice, but my advice, if you like, is get it early because yeah. sometimes with travel insurance, it can cover you in advance so if i get in i know i'm going over to europe let's say i'm not but if i was going to europe in six months um, i would probably get the insurance asap yeah because then if i book flights or hotels in that time and something was to happen there's a chance that the insurance might cover me now mm. that's not all of them but you could have a look around right once again yeah and it'll often will cover you for delays or missing luggage or anything like that that's right so you can use that to your advantage you can get the insurance sooner rather than later like instead of like doing what I did and when I went to Japan snowboarding looking at the insurance on my phone as I was at the airport <laughs> that's probably not yeah, a good idea snowboarding's not usually covered in the general one is it yeah that's it you normally have to get it like, yeah they have more like an adventurous insurance that's right and you can't go off the groom runs which I tend to do yeah whenever I snowboard so anyway um that's the my key with travel insurance is just get it early but also shop around sometimes the one when you book the flights isn't the best one. Yeah. So you can, once again, you can go online. Yeah, I think Choice and a few of the other comparison mm. sites have some really good info on this. So just look at it. Um, credit cards can offer travel insurance if you're that way inclined. Where not You often e- have to use the card That's for right. the insurance. And, and pay for the flights. And if you've cut up the card in that time, it's yeah. uh, no longer valid. We're not an anti-credit card podcast, but <laughs> I'm an anti-credit oh, card is. person. <laughs> so I would say like, just cut it up. Yeah. But it actually, so there has been some studies to show that it can actually help but just make sure that you know what the rules are in terms of do you have to pay for the thing that's covered by the c- mm. credit card insurance with the credit card or do you does it just cover anything yeah this is i mean this is probably a good thing for someone that's like a business person you could probably get credit card insurance and not have to worry about paying extra mm. whatever but yeah that's something to look into Whew. okay that's a whole lot of information just yeah. dumped on everyone <laughs> There's definitely a lot of insurances out there. and uh, Yes. Rule of thumb is like anything that can financially wipe you out. That's probably where you should start. Yeah. Yeah. Start with the, the yeah. most crucial insurances first and uh, that's I it. guess see where you go from there. That's it. So uh, I'll put a checklist online of different types of insurance and some information, some links in the show notes, whatever. I haven't done that yet, but I'll do it when we go live. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions and answers. Feel free, Kate. I'm guessing that you, yeah, you're so happy I'm, for me to field the questions yeah, on this. Yeah, send send your questions Owen's way. Yeah. He's uh, spent a lot of time and effort searching insurance. That's right. You can hit me on Twitter at Owen Rask or just visit the Rask Finance website and just ask a question. I'm not licensed to give advice on insurance, but we do have some educational stuff on there and some we can yeah, point you in, right right in the right resources. And yeah, things. that's right. So to reflect on this, action points, we had... The inside insurance. and outside of super. So, yeah, so having a look at what insurances you might need or what you currently have inside your super and, um, yeah, making sure you've got the cover you, you need for your circumstances if you choose to do so. Yeah, that's right. And uh, just one thing on that, if you have multiple super funds, you may be paying multiple insurances. And I have had a look. You, If something happens and you, you don't get multiple life insurance payouts. There you go. So uh, having multiple life insurances yeah. with different supers is... Uh, Probably not the smartest yeah, idea. Yeah, if you're the type of person that thinks, I'll just get like four income protections <laughs> and then just accidentally fall at work. Yeah. Nah. yeah, the super funds are a little bit smarter than that. Yeah, that's right. Also, income protection is not the same as work cover. Remember, that's what, that's a key one. People don't realize that. Not the same. Uh, what else are we talking about? Health insurance, whether you're under 30, over 30, difference between the two. Yeah. 
Um, we said. I guess a lot. Of, there's really a wide ranging argument on whether private or public's better, and whether you get health insurance or not. I mean, I I personally get it because I I need a lot of eye eye stuff going on. Yep. But uh, yeah. yeah, you wear glasses. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's one thing that's on extras policies most of the time. And we talked about cars, the difference between fully comp and third party, things to look for when you deal with home and contents. Mm. It's probably not such a big deal if you live with the parents, but if you're outside of the house in an apartment, it's different to if you live in a house in Port Douglas, Yep. Um, which invite me over. Yes. Um, travel insurance, get it early. Yeah, I think travel insurance is pretty important because anything oh. could happen when you're overseas and most, most of the other insurances like health insurance only apply within the country. That's it, 100%. Um, so if anything unfortunately happens when you're, you're traveling and going on your big adventures, you want to make sure you're covered. That's right. And just so you know, if you're in Bali and you're sipping on a bunch of bin tanks and you hurt yourself, you're probably not going to be covered by travel insurance because you will have alcohol in your system. Mm. So before you... Yeah, and, and make some sure travel insurances don't cover every country, so make sure you have a look. 100%. And the one way to check that is to go to, there's a, a website which we'll link to, I think it's a foreign affairs website. Yeah. If it's an emergency zone or like there's a warning, insurer will flat out deny your mm. request. So just check that. Check with Smart Traveler before you yeah. travel as well. Really good one. Whew, that's oh, insurance. There we go. I did it in like less than half an hour. That's like wow. insurance. <laughs> okay, we'll have show notes if you need to uh, pull out any of the interesting parts of that and um we'll see you for the next episode i guess (laughs) thanks for listening yeah thanks for listening